Hello, my name is Anuska Taylor and welcome to my channel. Now on this week's video, I'm talking all about our voice as we age, which I think is a really important topic and also really important if you're someone that wants to ensure that you have the strongest, healthiest and most effortless voice as you get older. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the sort of five main stages that our voice goes through as we go through life. And I'm also going to share at the end some things that you can do to take care of your voice and to ensure that you can kind of maintain that really strong, healthy voice into old age. So a big part of my work with clients is how conditioning affects the voice. So this could be our geography, it could be cultural, it could be society, it could be family conditioning. All of those types of things can impact the voice, how we use our voice, what we think is possible with our voice and those things we can change if we understand our conditioning and we learn how to navigate that. But what we can't necessarily change is the biology of our voice and how our voice changes as we age. Now to some extent genetics will absolutely play a role in how our voice develops. Also our lifestyle will have an impact, you know, are we a heavy smoker, heavy drinker, do we exercise? Do we take care of our physical health, our mental health? Do we have any kind of voice care practices? All of that is going to impact the voice as well and how it develops as we age. But I just want to talk about the five stages of this development. And then because I think this is really, really useful and you can sort of work out what stage you're in as well. So the first stage, which I'm assuming no one is in this stage because otherwise you are an exceptional baby is the stage of the infant or the baby. Now, this is really fascinating to me because as babies, obviously we have a very high pitch to our voice because we have tiny vocal folds about three millimeters long, which is mind blowing. But also the larynx sits very high in the vocal tract. So again, it's giving us a smaller instrument. And um, there is a biological reason for that though. That's so that we can breathe and suckle simultaneously. Now, girls and boys sound the same as babies. It's the same kind of high pitch sound. But what is really fascinating to me is with babies that even though the vocal range and dynamics are very limited because the instrument is limited, they still definitely get their needs met. We still know this baby's hungry, this baby's uncomfortable, this baby wants something from me. So we, we can absolutely read into baby's cries, even though there's a lot of limitation there. Now, the next stage is the sort of young childhood stage. And so that can be anywhere from sort of 18 months to 24 months as a starting point, going up to about six years old. Now, in this stage, the larynx starts to drop in the vocal tract. And by the age of around six years old, the larynx is now in its sort of adult position. Remembering as a baby, it's much higher. The vocal folds have now doubled in size to about six millimeters, which is still teeny squeeny. And of course, now with that comes a wider range of sounds. The lungs are getting bigger, so there's more power in the voice. There's louder sounds coming out, which I'm sure you all know if you spent any time around toddlers. However, the cartilages are still softer than they are in adults. And so for this reason, the voice still doesn't have that ability to sustain any sort of real strength and power. So the voice tends to be smaller, a little bit weaker, a little bit lighter, because it hasn't got that, that muscular strength yet in it. Also, what's interesting in this phase, still girls and boys still basically sound the same. I mean, it's, you know, this age, it's still not necessarily really obvious um, the female or the male voice. So in puberty, this is where the voice really starts to change. This is where we really start to notice the difference, vocally speaking, between male and female children. And this can happen anywhere between sort of 10 to 15 years old. In both cases with girls and boys, the larynx will get bigger, but in boys, it will get much bigger and it will happen a lot faster. So the so there's a much more obvious vocal shift. So with boys, the larynx gets bigger, the voice drops, and as a consequence, the voice will get deeper and fuller. And they'll also have a, a prominent Adam's apple. 
So with boys, the vocal folds can get to about 23 millimeters. Remembering as babies, we started at three, which is amazing. And with girls around 17 millimeters. Now, when we get into adulthood, as a general rule, the voice stays fairly stable unless there's any sort of significant emotional or physical impact to the voice, whether it's illness, disease, mental health issues, etc. However, much like during puberty, with boys in particular, where the onset of the hormonal changes gives that drastic change to a boy's voice, there are on a smaller scale changes to female voices as well. Now I've done separate videos on these because they are enormous topics in their own right, but the female voice through the menstrual cycle, the female voice through the menopause, perimenopause, there are hormonal changes at play and anything to do with hormones is going to have an impact on the voice. Now, again, it's going to vary from woman to woman. Not every woman is going to experience her voice in the same way, much like women don't experience their periods in the same way. I know for me, I do notice a change in my voice throughout my monthly cycle, but that's also partly because I'm very intimate with my voice as well. So I'm acutely aware of any shifts that are happening. So if you're a woman watching this and you're particularly interested in that, I will post the links below. If you feel like there's any changes happening to your voice, either through your menstrual cycle or if you're going through perimenopause or menopause. So then when we get into old age, the voice, much like the body, is impacted by the aging process. How that looks for us individually is going to, again, depend on genetics. It's going to depend on how well we've cared for our voice and what we've done with our voice over the years. But as a general rule, our bodies become less mobile and stiffer. And with the voice, there's a breakdown of elastin and collagen fibers. There's less mucus production and the muscles of the voice start to atrophy and thin. Now, the results of this or the consequences of this mean potentially a less flexible, agile voice, often a drier voice, a potentially a weaker or breathy a voice, maybe an instability. So the voice can kind of break or crack and you might get that yodeling effect. There may be less vocal stamina. And there could be more likely to be a vocal strain or discomfort. Now, what's really fascinating is specifically for women, the pitch lowers, particularly after menopause. And often with the changes in hormones, uh, the voice can become rougher and breathier. With men, interestingly, the voice tends to rise in pitch because the structures of the voice become thinner and stiffer. What's really fascinating for me with this is as babies, we kind of start off at the same point. And then we imagine that we're here as babies and then boys, boys go through puberty. So the voice drops, female voices drop a little bit, but nothing like the male voice. And then as we age, the female voice drops and the male voice rises. And then we almost come back to the same point. Like we meet again, at old age, and often you, you might hear with elderly people, male or female, the voices start to sound quite similar, much like with babies, you can't differentiate between a, a, a girl or a boy baby, because they kind of sound the same and look the same. So it, it's really, really fascinating. I feel how the voice kind of shifts and then we kind of meet again in old age. So I'm sharing this, not only to kind of help you understand the process a little bit more, but also so that you know that you can absolutely have a voice that's strong, healthy, agile and powerful moving into old age. Obviously, you have to, much like with the body, you have to keep it strong, healthy and flexible. And if you do, you will be rewarded. Obviously, things like diet, sleep, hydration are all going to have a part two. But I think some people think that their voice is just the way it is and there's nothing they can do about it. And I promise you, if you take care of your voice, particularly before you get to that point where things do start to kind of change quite drastically, you'll find that the voice will just keep working better. Now, I find with myself, I mean, in my 20s compared to where I am now, it is night and day where my voice is. And you'd think as I got older, my voice would get worse, but I would 
absolutely say my voice has got stronger and healthier and way more reliable as I've got older. So, you know, if you do put the work in and the time in, it you will be rewarded. So my first tip for you is to build a relationship with your voice, because a lot of people, particularly when you're not a singer and you're just speaking day to day, a lot of people have very, very little awareness of their voice. And I mean that in every sense of the word. They really don't give any thought to it. It's just a means to communicate. But other than that, I don't think about it. So I invite you to start to really tune into your voice, both in terms of how it feels and how it sounds. Now, you, of course, you do need to listen to recordings on this because your voice sounds different in your head to everyone else. And I did my last video touched on this topic. So the more in tune with your voice you are, the more intimate with your voice you are, the more you can then catch things earlier, the more you know when to take a break, the more you know, okay, I just need to warm up my voice, then it's gonna feel better. I just need to drink more water. You'll know what your voice needs, the more in tune you are with it. And then you won't push through, for example, if your voice is feeling tired or strained, you won't keep pushing through. You'll be like, no, no, I need to take a break. I need to steam my voice. I need to do something. A lot of times when I work with clients, they don't, they, they feel like they have no awareness of their voice. I'll say, well, what do you feel? And they say, I don't know. But I promise you, the more you bring awareness to your voice, the more that part of you will start to be ignited because if you've never brought awareness to your voice in this way you've never had any reason to bring awareness to it so it is there you've just got to kind of wake it up it's been a bit dormant so don't give up even if you don't feel anything straight away just start to bring awareness to how your voice feels and how it sounds the next thing is to keep it warmed up and keep it moving and I've done whole videos and warm ups. I say it till I'm blue in the face, but it really is something that's going to keep your voice younger for longer, agile, flexible, strong, healthy, all the things that we want. It's going to help the voice work and feel better as you go through life. Um, if you want something quick to do, you can do something like a really gentle hum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm or even an ng like the end of the word sing and the idea with the warm-ups and and doing this type of thing is we're getting our voice out of that very narrow range that we tend to speak in so if this is like the possible range of our voice often when we speak we're speaking in a tiny range so the point of the warm up is to take you out of where you normally are, not to stay in that range. So without straining, without yelling, without pushing and shouting, just move the voice up and move the voice down. And just start to play around with that. And just doing that very gently a few times a day, you will be amazed at the difference that makes. It's just really what we call kind of cross training for the voice we live in one space we want to get out of that space when we do the training and the warm-ups so try that you can try it on the hum the very gentle hum make sure you feel that resonance that buzz forward around the lips so it's a mm, not a mm, it's forward or you can try the mm. with the ng or the mm, just make sure the tongue is relaxed and forward in the mouth so it's the tip of the tongues against the bottom teeth versus pulling back because mm, then you're it's going to sound constricted. It's not going to feel very nice. Um, number three is really just to keep the voice hydrated. It's just I mean, it's stuff that, you know, already, I'm sure if you live in a very dry environment, if you've got a very dry house or you're in a very dry office, also sometimes having a humidifier can really, really help. The voice loves to be moist. The voice loves hydration. And as I mentioned, one of the things that happens as we age is we start to lose that kind of mucosa, the production of mucosa starts to diminish. And that's really what helps the vocal folds move freely and effortlessly. So the more hydrated we can be, the better. Now, if you have higher vocal demands, and there's a lot of people um, in their 50s, 60s, 70s, running very successful businesses out there in the world, doing incredible things. 
you really do want to learn and understand how your voice works and how to access your optimal speaking voice, because then it's not going to ever hinder you as you move through life, as you move through the years with your business, really start to understand how does this instrument that I have inbuilt in my body really work? And then you can develop a vocal training program, which sounds scarier than it is, to really support your voice and where you are in your journey. You know, if you're a woman, maybe you're, you know, you've been through the menopause, maybe you're going through the menopause, wherever you are in your in your life journey, then you can actually really take care of your voice and give it what it needs. So this is where you would need to find someone to help you a voice teacher, a voice coach, someone that really understands the voice and can really help you access that optimal speaking voice, which is individual. There's not a cookie cutter approach to this. We all have a, a unique way of accessing that in our own voice. So I work with clients on this all the time. I work with clients all over the world of all different ages. So if this is something that resonates with you and you feel like you need some help, that you've got higher speaking demands, you're going out into the world and doing bigger speeches, bigger engagements, and your voice really, really matters. It's so worth the investment because then your voice is going to last. It's not going to suddenly give up on you at some point. So I'll put a link below if you're interested in finding out more about my coaching. But if not, I hope this video has been useful and educational. And if you have any questions, please post them below. If you like this video, please do like, comment or subscribe, but I will see you on my next video.